Hello, in this video we're going to take this consumer's utility function, it's a function of three goods, and we're going to drive the consumer's demand functions. Here's the consumer's utility function once again. Here is the consumer's budget constraint with these three goods, good X, good Y, and good Z. First thing we're going to do is get the marginal utility of X, take this exponent on the X term, bring it down in front, and then subtract one from that exponent, and this will simplify very nicely down to the following. The marginal utility of good y is a similar partial derivative. This time we're going to get y raised to the minus one-half power. And then the marginal utility of good z, just going to get one. We're going to set up our utility maximizing condition where the marginal utility per dollar is equal across all three goods. So making our substitutions in for the marginal utilities. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get the demand for good x. We're going to get the demand for good x by taking this far term on the left and setting it equal to this far term on the right. So doing that, we're going to now solve this expression for x. Following the rules of exponents, I bring that x down into the denominator. And we'll get this result. And now squaring both sides, this will be the demand for good x. To get the demand for good y, we're going to take this middle term here and set it equal to this far right term. And we're going to solve that for y. So solving this expression for y will give us the demand for good y. So following a similar simplification process, moving the y down into the denominator, cross multiplying, and squaring both sides, we now have the demand for good y. One thing you'll notice here is that the demand for good x and the demand for good y are not a function, are not a function of the consumer's money income, m. To get the demand for good z, we're going to plug the demand for good x and good y into the budget constraint and solve for z. So here's the demand for good x and good y once again. Plugging each one of those into the budget constraint. Making our substitutions here. And now we're going to solve for z. So first thing I'll do is we've got a price of good x here divided by the price of good x squared. That'll simplify down to the following. We've got a price of good y here divided by the price of good y squared. That'll simplify down to the following. Moving some things around. And now dividing through by the price of good z. Dividing everything through by the price of good z. We have the demand for good z. Now it's possible that the demand for good Z could be negative. In that case, the consumer would not buy any units of good Z. So if the following condition holds, Z would be less than zero. So in that case, you, you can't demand minus two goods, for example. So we just set Z equal to zero. So if Z happens to equal zero, the consumer doesn't buy any units of good Z, then the utility function will look like this. And the budget constraint will ignore the price of good Z times units of good Z. And so we're going to maximize utility here when the consumer does not buy any good Z. And we once again get the marginal utility good X, marginal utility good Y. And we'll set up the utility maximizing condition. This time I'll set, up, set it up as the marginal rate of substitution equals the rate, ratio of the prices. So doing that. Here's the marginal rate of substitution on the left-hand side, equaling the ratio of the prices. Simplifying here a little bit by moving some of these terms around. We're going to solve for y, squaring both sides. We have this expression. I'm going to plug this now into the budget constraint. Where I have y, I'm going to plug in this red term here. And now we're going to solve this for x. And that will give us the demand for good x. So moving to the next slide, solving this expression for x. This py divided by py squared just leaves this py down here. Factoring out an x term on the right-hand side. And now dividing through by what's in parentheses. That is the demand for good x. To get the demand for good y, We'll take our expression that we solved that was in red, and now we're going to solve this expression for x. And plug that into the budget constraint. And now solve for good y, and you'll have the demand for good y. 
Got a price of good X and a price of good X squared down here. Simplifies down to the following. I'm going to factor out a Y term on the right hand side. Doing that over here and now dividing through by what's in parentheses, we have the demand for good Y. So again, this demand for good Y and the last demand for good X we just found only occurs if the consumer does not buy any units of good C. Okay, I'll stop here.